Hi and welcome back to part two of this uh, uh, tutorial 102 video and uh, in the first part if you've not seen it we set up the program to draw some uh, histogram lines on a chart based on the number of ticks occurring at the particular value and I sh showed you it applied to a, a mini DAO and uh, also to the euro dollar. Now when I first wrote as writing this program I tried to draw those lines using trend lines using the DT point, date time point. So what I'm going to just show you is what I did just uh, because it might be of interest to you and uh, at least the technique. So what I'm going to do is just comment out the draw objects add rectangle. I'm going to leave the rest of the syntax there although we don't really need it. And what I'm going to do is uncomment the drawing objects add trend line and uh, just going to verify the program and uh, while the program is calculating away on the chart I'll just show you what I did and uh, explain so everything's the same as we just did in the first video apart from now we're uh, actually we were doing this in the first one as well but we weren't using information but I'm using a start uh, a date time point which is actually the uh, left display date time on the chart and we're just parsing that to get it into date time format and then the end date time I'm uh, doing the same except I'm using the right hand date time from the chart then I'm subtracting the uh, start from the end to give uh, a time span called diff and uh, if incidentally if you just go back up to the charts you'll see here we've got the uh, NDT is date time, uh, start DT is date time and then diff is a time span. And then what I wanted to do, what my idea was, I'd find out the total number of seconds and then draw lines based on the fraction of the total number of seconds between those two values and you'll see it didn't quite work out uh, as I hadn't quite thought it through as I should. So uh, what I did, I, I found out the, di the difference, which is the time span. And then from that, uh, I got the number of seconds, which I stored in value two. Okay, so what I then created was a date time point, which I called DT.1. And uh, I did that at the start date time and also at the price value that we're getting from the uh, the vector. Then what, then what I did, I added to this a number of seconds and we did that as a, uh, uh, a fraction of value 2. Value 2 being the value of seconds between the, the left of the chart and the right of the chart. So we took vals value 1 then we divided that by the maximum number of ticks which is stored in val 0. As you know we, we did the, a sort of the vector. And uh, what I th then did was I created another uh, date time point, which I called DT.2. And that was created at the start DT. Remember, we've now added some seconds to the start DT. And uh, what I then did is I created a, a trend line at DT.1 and DT.2, set it to uh, persist, set it to extend, uh, extend right false. I did the uh, the coloring like we did before and then I added it to the chart using drawing objects add trend line one. So what I'm going to do now is go to the chart and uh, see what uh, see how this looks. Okay, so back to the chart and you'll notice here this looks quite different and uh, what seems to be happening is a lot of lines stop at this point and a few carry on the longest ones but the reason for that is because we've got a uh, a break a change of uh, date here new day and uh, obviously what's happening is the calculation adding those seconds to the start time is putting us at a time where there really isn't there's no bar on the chart so we're getting this uh, strange effect where we stop at the uh, the uh, the date change and uh, some some lines continue. So I just wanted to show you that obviously it wasn't a very uh, bright idea but just to give you an idea of how you would use date time points and uh, uh, clearly this is probably not one of those uh, cases where you would or at least you'd need to uh, calculate which bars had time um, associated with them and uh, and do the calculation accordingly. And of course there is also the uh, the bar number 
capability uh, that you could use with a program like this but I think I like the XY point because you can control the display to the uh, the pixel level which is particularly good when we're just doing the calculation once and uh, displaying the results on the chart and we're not having to keep on updating that with new price information or when we move the chart or change the uh, the chart anyway um, that's a very quick overview of this uh, this tutorial program and uh, if you do have any questions then please feel free to email them to me thank you